Inside Hilltopper Athletics is brought to you by Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Here's your host, Lynn Allum. Welcome to Inside Hilltopper Athletics. We just got back from the Mountain East Conference Tournament and now we prepare for postseason play. I'm Lynn Allum, joined by my host Don Clegg. And as always, we have head men's basketball coach Ben Hallett. So, Coach, it was a long week. Have you gotten any rest with the time change and the late night games? Still, uh, still a little tired, but uh, starting to get my rest back. So, um, I know we have practice today. So, really looking forward to practice and preparing for for uh, Friday's game. Well, let's quickly look back um, to how it all came out in the MEC tournament, and then we'll get to, to what we're going to be dealing with this week. So, let's start with the Glenville game, a team that. You had played late in the regular season, and that was a quite of a game down there. I think it was a one-point game with a minute ten left. So, give us your thoughts: how you played against Glenville, and how you pulled out a victory. Yeah. Glenville was the good game. Um, we we knew going in um, the game at Glenville, we didn't shoot the ball well. We were nine of thirty-three from the three-point line, but I did think that we got quality shots that game. They just weren't going in. So. Um, really put an emphasis on let's get clean looks in transition. And if you notice, especially in the first five minutes, we stepped in some clean looks, you know, advancing the basketball early in the possession and, um, you know, shot the ball extremely well. I think we're 18 of 32 from the three-point line that game, which I think it tied a, a Mountain East Conference record. Um, and, and just I thought our energy was really good and our guys were dialed in, ready to play. So that was a good game. And here's what makes that so interesting. I'm 180 years old and I know everybody. So I'm seeing fans, parents, supporters of the program after that game. And they're like, yeah, if we shoot the ball like that, we're unbeatable. <laughs> and I wanted to say, but I didn't. You know we're not going to hit 18 of 32 the next night. So the next matchup, now it really gets tough. You're playing a Concord team that I believe only had six losses on the entire season and has a really, really good basketball team, a team that advances to this NCAA tournament. So thoughts on the Concord game? Yeah, first off, already played them twice, obviously, and, and beat them twice in, in close games. And the old cliche is it's hard to beat a team three times. And, and that's going through my mind all pregame, like, gosh, this, this is going to happen. And things weren't looking good there, and especially in the first half. We weren't playing well, um, weren't shooting the ball well. and. To go into halftime, and I think we were down nine, I believe, at halftime, and actually felt good about that because we weren't playing well, we weren't shooting well, and we were only down nine, and um, thought we got off to a pretty good start there in the second half, and um, you know some guys hit some big shots for us. I know late in the game, Chaz Hines came off the bench, off the, the out of bounds, and, and hit a clutch three, and then John Corte hit a big time three there with you know a minute and a half left in the game that kind of sealed the deal for us, but. Kind of a grind out win. It was a grind out win. It certainly wasn't pretty, but um, you know, in the semi semifinal game of the conference tournament, you take it and, and you move on. Yeah, it's it's not going to get easy, and I think that's probably one of the hardest things that you have to deal with. Is there's a level of expectation that one West Liberty is going to win every game, and you're going to win every game by at least 20 points, and they don't realize that. The other teams try really hard, and they prepare, and they do whatever, and not to bring up a negative. But if we would have said, you're going to play a team as good as Concord, and you're only going to have nine points with nine minutes left in the first half, and you still come out of there with a win, we would say we take it. I'd sign that contract any day. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So that now sets the stage for the game that many people thought we would get um, a Charleston team who is really, really well coached, talented. They were the number one seed based on two wins over West Liberty in the regular season. So, your thoughts going into the final and then how the game played out? Thoughts going in for myself, it was number one, it was a championship game, so I'm excited. And number two, for me, they've already beat us twice. So, that gave me some extra mojo. Like, I really want to play this game. I want to redeem ourselves, um, and, and again, I'm not making any excuses because they had to do this as well. But you know, we—I got back to my house at midnight on Saturday night, 
and we had to play a basketball game at five the next day. I, I just I think we ran out of some gas there in, in the championship game. I thought some guys were tired. Um, you know, we were having a hard time getting the tempo going in our direction. But I think you got to give a lot of credit to, to Charleston because they just they did everything they needed to do to win the game. They didn't make mistakes. Um, I thought Dwayne Jones was really really good, and you know his. Our game plan was, you know, we wanted to, to, you know, maybe sag off of him and make him beat us from the outside, and he certainly did that. And then he, he pick and chooses his spots to, to beat us to the rim, and he made shots at the rim. And um, you know, I just think they're 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 so talented. They don't beat themselves. They don't make mistakes. And um, you know, obviously, when we don't play well versus them and we don't shoot well versus them, it's going to make a, a really tough game for us to win. Well, this will make you chuckle. I saw Coach Osborne after the game and congratulated mm -hmm. him and said. Obviously, you're a tremendous coach. And he said, well, I guess this means I'm not the worst coach in the league. So. <laughs> of course, Dwayne. yeah, because we always say if someone would have interviewed you and Dwayne before the game, you would have said you're a 22-point underdog, and they would have said they were a 22 underdog. So uh, hats off, Charleston, incredible run. They claim them out in these conference championship. But fortunately, we're sitting here today with a lot of basketball left to play. Absolutely. So uh, now that we've now that we're done looking back, let's look ahead to what we have coming up uh, this week. Uh, once again, you know, congratulations! Uh, another NCAA tournament invitation. Uh, you may or may not know this: 15 straight years for West Liberty getting an NCAA tournament bid, and that ties a 50-year-old NCAA mm -hmm. record for nice. consecutive appearances. And uh, the neat thing about that, you've been involved in just about every one of those 15 tournament appearances as a player, assistant coach, a head coach. Um, so what, what's your secret? What's the key? I, I don't know if there's a secret. <laughs> I, I think it, we're making it look a little bit easier, but it's incredibly hard. And, and a lot goes into every single game on the season. And, and you know, we prepare for every single game. And, and you know, we're practicing every single day since, you know, the, the day they, these guys get to school. And um, these guys put an incredible amount of time outside of practice on this floor getting up shots. And um, it's a reward for them. It, it's, you know, we get a chance to, to continue to play. And, you know, fortunately for me, I didn't have to go make the speech to the seniors after we lost to, to Charleston that that was their last basketball game. There's still more basketball ahead of us. And, like, the cool thing for me is we're not playing a conference opponent first round. And, and you know, you look at Charleston's got to play Concord in, in the first round. And, you know, if they win that, there's potentially they could play West Virginia State if, if West Virginia State would beat Cal. So it's just different for us. And, and I'm glad we get a PSAC opponent. And um, I think it's going to be a really good game. Well, and that was the next point I was going to bring up. But, you know, it's a little bit of a different format this yeah. week uh, with Gannon hosting both the men's and the women's regional. Uh, they've split the uh, – tournament into two pods and you have a 14 pod playing again and another 14 pod playing a cow and referencing your point it's difficult to win it's hard to win uh, especially in the Mountain East Conference there's eight teams in the Atlantic mm -hmm. region for them for the Mountain East and I think you noted three of those MEC teams the other three teams yeah. are in the other pod now, yeah. now why do you like to have this breakdown like that where you're not playing MEC teams in the postseason as opposed to playing them. Yeah, I mean, if it could potentially mean we would be playing Concord for the fourth time in one season. I just – I want to play someone different, <laughs> someone that we're not used to preparing for. And um, I think if you were to, to ask any coach in the country, they would much rather play someone that they don't typically play against than someone that they've already played two to three times during the, the regular season. So just something different for me. And, and, you know, since I've been a part of West Liberty and I don't think I've played Millersville. It's just, you know, this is the first time that I've competed against Millersville. So just looking forward to the matchup. One of the things that makes the, in, the Division II tournament different from the Division I is what we just talked about, that at the Division I level, which is an incredibly complex discussions about the seating and the regions and who's going to play who, that is part of that discussion. They do not like to match up teams that have already played once, twice, three times, and they purposely avoid that. Where here, under a regional format, it's almost impossible because if you make – and I get this all the time, well, this is stupid. Why did the NCAA make us play so-and-so who we've who's in our league – because if you don't, you're really going to damage another team. If you're 
changing seating based on how many games you've played against somebody. You could have earned a high seat and lost it. So that's not going to be fair either. So this is really the way that they have to do it. But I do agree with you, and I'm looking more for the kids. You want the NCAA tournament to be different. You want it to be a new experience, a fresh experience. And unfortunately, at the Division II level, sometimes that can't be avoided. Yeah. Yeah, back to your point about uh, Millersville County and familiarity, I, th I think uh, I was doing some prep work for this, and I think uh, West Liberty's only played them twice in almost 100 years of basketball, like once in the 90s and once, I think, 2009, we played them in a tournament down at Wheeling. But, um, so anyway, it's a team from the PSAC East that we hardly ever see. So you're pretty much starting from scratch in terms of preparation. What all goes into uh, putting together a scouting report against an unfamiliar opponent at tournament time? Yeah, so we've, we've started to watch tape on them yesterday um, and started to, to watch individual clips of their personnel. Um, and it's... For us as coaches, it's get familiar with their personnel and get familiar with their style of play. Because again, I watch you know some of the, the the Pennsylvania League game during the season, but I don't really scout it. I just watch the live stream. So we dug into them yesterday, um, and, and we'll watch some stuff with our team today. But the thing that sticks out the most to me about Millersville is their their, their size. They've got two um, bigs, that, you know, and Matt Dade who. You know, we recruited when he left Westchester and had him on campus and really good player and a nice kid and a great family and Drew Stover. Those two guys are, are a handful and they're big, they're skilled, they can both shoot, they're very underrated passers and those two guys got her undivided attention right now. Yeah, when you're talking about uh, references those guys, uh, I think Dade's like a three-time all piece sack yeah. guy. And Stover right now is leading the nation in field goal percentage, yeah. and he's averaging double figures from yeah. the floor. So, uh, dunks and layups. Dunks and layups, <laughs> yeah. high percentage shots. <laughs> so, But uh, what's Liberty, you know, and especially uh, we referenced you as player, coach, everything. A lot of success in the NCAA tournament in the Atlantic region, especially uh, – this is the 15th year the Atlantic Region Tournament since we switched out of the East and all like that. So West Liberty has made it to 10 of the four previous 14 championship games and won seven of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, all. so the tradition's there, the history's there. What do you guys have to do this weekend to add to that tradition? I think, you know, the key to – at least the first game, and that, obviously that's the game that we're thinking about and talking about, is just implement, and, and we really got to um, stress to get into our style of play. We don't want to make this a, a half-court type of game, and Millerville is probably saying the exact opposite. They want to make this a half-court oriented game and um, contrasting styles of play, and you know, we weren't able to do that versus Charleston. We were never able to get this game going up tempo and get the game having more possessions than usual. And um, So it's going to be tough, and, and obviously – there's a reason they've won 24 or 25 plus games this season. They're they're not as deep as teams that we've played, but their first five, six to seven guys are all really talented. And um, it's going to take a, a serious effort from us to beat these guys. For the viewers out there, and Don had referenced this earlier, uh, unusual format. It's almost impossible for schools to host both the men and women. The logistics just don't work with that many games at one facility. So what the NCAA does in this situation is they go to a sub-regional. They divide the bracket in half. In this regional, Gannon, number one seed, they're at home. They're hosting in Erie. Cal PA, the number two seed, is hosting their four teams in their pod. And then the highest seed remaining standing will get to host a championship game. Now, because of that, normally the men play Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday because of travel, potential travel on that Friday or that uh, Tuesday night. They bumped it back. So we play Friday night at what time? Friday night's at 7.30 tip-off. So there will be women's games in the afternoon, same facility, Atlantic Regional, Gannon number one seed. If we win Friday, what time is the game on Saturday? You're going to do this to me. Uh, it's, it's also 7.30. So 
both evening games. Remember, we went through this last yeah, yeah, year. Yeah. We can never get the times right. But uh, it should be a, an incredibly exciting tournament. Um, and I want to finish with this, talking about the regional. 15 straight years, and we all know how difficult it is, and people take this for granted. But there are historic programs in our own league that aren't even in the tournament this year on the men and women's yeah. side. And and if there's anybody out there from those schools listening, this is not, we're not making this derogatory. This is an absolute compliment. You got programs on the women's side like Charleston, who's there almost every year, Glenville, who has had an unbelievable run, including a national championship that didn't make the tournament. On the men's side, you have Fairmont and IUP, which are perennial heavyweights that didn't even make the tournament. There, that statement alone demonstrates how difficult it is well, to go 15 straight. Just to add to that point, uh, looking at the men's field, the eight teams in the Atlantic Region tournament this year, West Liberty is the only team back that played in the regional tournament last year. Oh, well, that's... That surprises me. Yeah. yeah, you should have led with that. <laughs> uh, I do want to mention uh, one of the things that I love about my job is to be able to interact with people. And since I retired in October from the full-time, the athletic director gig, I miss that a little bit. I don't get to talk with the student athletes near as much. I don't get to see people near as much. I did run into John Cordy's father at the game the other night. They were from Massachusetts. I had never met him. He came up, introduced himself, said some incredibly kind things about our podcast, the basketball program, Coach Hallett. So, Mr. Cordy, if you're out there listening, thank you for those kind words. Uh, hopefully you'll get a chance to make it down and, and get to the NCA Regional up at Erie, PA. But it's been another outstanding season, Coach. Thank you for another championship, which – you got to work a little bit harder. You've only won seven in seven years. So maybe we can talk about that All off right. the air and get a little bit better work ethic. But uh, as always, we're tremendously proud of you and your program. We wish you all the best. We'll be up there. Uh, we will be doing podcast from the site as we did last year. And we hope you all turn in. And remember, the streams are no longer free. That is an NCA decision. That's not a West Liberty decision. We have nothing to do about that. If you go to NCA.com, you'll be able to find the pricing structure. Uh, you can buy it just for per game, or you can buy the total package. It gets you all the games. But please come up, view it in person. If you can't, please get the stream. We love your support, and we'll hopefully be back next week uh, talking about preparing for an Elite Eight run. That wraps up this. We'll see you later. Hi, my name is Craig Bober. I'm a senior finance major at West Liberty University. And today I'm gonna to be showing you what it's like to be a part of this program. Heading to my first class of the day, investment portfolio analysis with Professor Jesse. Uh, we're going to start off doing some current events and then we're going to look at evaluating some stocks, figuring out the intrinsic value. We're going to do Knight, Tyson, Disney, and waste management. Uh, we need to make some investments with the investment club. The finance program at West Liberty is an exceptional experience. In the program, there are amazing teachers that always make class fun and engaging. A new student enrolling in the program should expect a personable learning experience when you're engaging in classroom activities and building relationships with your teachers and classmates. I chose the major in finance because of my interest in the finance world and my want to pursue a career in business. Uh, my goals after graduating are to become a certified financial planner and help people achieve their retirement and savings goals. Heading into my second class of the day, Management Capstone with Dr. Rakia. So part of what we've been doing over the last several weeks was looking at the internal and external factors of the companies that you had chosen to research. This major is good for others to consider because of the quality of education you receive and the relationships you build with the people in the business department. Uh, professionally with a finance degree, you have many different career options like banking, insurance, financial planning, or even tax services. I chose West Liberty University because I did not want to go far from home, but I still wanted to be away. 
Personally, what I like most about West Liberty is the great people that live here. West Liberty Business Program attracts many people from different countries, so this provides you with a unique and diverse learning environment being here. We're going to be heading into the Investment Club meeting. Uh, so, as we talk about, here's our current uh, portfolio allocation. Um, so we still have about $5,000 left, so we need to make some investments. The Investment Club is a student-ran club that is sponsored by West Banco, where we use real money to buy stocks and bonds to build a class portfolio. Uh, this club is a great place to learn about the stock market and how investing works. All the decisions that we make regarding our portfolio are voted on by all the members of the club. And now for my last class of the day, my finance capstone with Professor Jesse. West Liberty's finance capstone is unique because it is a CFP board registered program, which is something that not all colleges offer. Uh, in this course, we learn about topics like ethics, retirement planning, tax planning, and risk management, which prepares us for the CFP exam. And now we're gonna cap off the day with playing some basketball with my friends. Being a student athlete, there are many challenges that come with it, but the rewards far outweigh them. Uh, through my four years of playing football here, I learned many valuable life skills and have built friendships that will last a lifetime. Thanks for coming along with me today, and for more information, just visit our website. Disasters happen. Pick the team that takes care of them all. Powered by offices in Wheeling, Morgantown, and Pittsburgh, Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Ben Hallett. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Hilltoppers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. My name is Oceana Smith. I'm a community arts major at West Liberty University and today I'm going to show you what it's like to be in my program. So starting off today we're going to go into my CEP practicum class. So what I would like us to do today is um, the creation of a button. So if you had to create your own button today, reflecting your practicum experience so far, what would it say and why? Some of the best parts of the program so far have been the friends that I made and the experiences we get to share both on and off of campus. Because it's a growing program, the community arts majors are very close-knit, as well as the entirety of the community education program. So it's great to be sharing these experiences with people that I call friends rather than just a classroom full of students. I would encourage others to consider community arts because you don't have to know what you want your future to look like at first. There is a lot of room to explore and grow in this program in order to find your perfect fit in terms of career path. It's designed to have flexibility and the ability to be tailored to your personal interests. And the coordinating director, Dr. Miriam Roth Douglas, is an amazing educator and passionate about the success of her students. I live in just says creativity lives everywhere. At my practicum site at the Stifle Center, um, I've been really pushed to develop my creativity um, on my own. And then I just put some little cute little decorations around it just because I felt like it. Now we're heading into my community empowerment and engagement class. We'll do a little warm up, a brainstorm competition regarding. Um, some of the things we've worked on in our previous session. I would like to see which group is able to write down the most ideas and concepts in 90 seconds. So. The Community Arts Program at West Liberty is based on a lot of problem and project-based learning. Um, rather than standard tests, we get to apply the information we learn in class to problems and projects in the community. Um, our most recent project has been with Grow Ohio Valley in downtown Wheeling. 
Their mission is focused around food security and food sovereignty, a problem that Wheeling has been struggling with for a long time. Our job this semester is to come up with possible community projects that can go into the 17th Street building that they recently purchased and are trying to transform it into some kind of community center that will really benefit downtown Wheeling and meet the needs that the Wheeling area has. So now we're in the Arts and Ed Center uh, to work on my scale model project. On campus we have the Center for Arts and Education. Um, I think it's one of the best resources that we have here at West Liberty. It comes into play a lot in the community arts program as you can imagine. The Center for Arts and Education is a maker space that we have here on campus where you have access to sustainable found materials and creative elements to help craft projects. It's also a great area for creatives to go and work on their passion projects. In one of my CEP classes, we currently have a group project going on. We are working on a scale model for our proposed ideas to go into the 17th Street building at Grow Ohio Valley. For our project, we hope to create a space for locals selling product to connect with graphic designers in order to design and um, create packaging and branding for their products. And we also want to leave room to work in internship opportunities for West Liberty's VCD program. Now we're at the Stifle Center for Fine Arts for my off-campus practicum in Wheeling. Currently, I am doing my off-campus practicum with the Stifle Fine Arts Center. It is a community art center that acts as a gallery as well as a, an art hub for local artists. They also offer classes and art workshops to the public, but currently they are having their holiday art show and sale and it was a really great learning experience to be able to be involved in the setup of that. I chose this program because when I came to West Liberty, I didn't really have a clear picture of what I wanted to do, except that I love the arts and I wanted to be in a position where I could surround myself by the arts and other artists. When I finish my degree, I hope to work in some kind of community art center, a gallery, or an art museum. Um, ultimately somewhere that I can continue working on my craft as well. Thanks for checking out the Community Arts Program. For more information, go to our website. Hi, I'm Jason Ake. I'm a grad student at West Liberty University, uh, and I'm working on the Earthworm Lab. So we're attempting to study some invasive earthworms here on the campus property. Uh, we have a survey area where we go out and try and figure out how many they are, where they are, what species they are. Earthworms are really small, of course, and you, know, you don't really think about them, and you hear about them being good for gardens and all that. But these invasive earthworms live out in the woods and they eat basically everything. They live in the dirt, they eat leaves, wood, take all the nutrients out of the forest. Uh, plants can't grow, bugs can't find food, even trees start dying because they run out of nutrients. So our end goal is just trying to get a better understanding of the species. We're using some new spatial analysis techniques. Uh, I really hope that we can include this research to write my master's thesis. Hello, my name is J.R. Oliash. I'm a campus police officer here at West Liberty University. I've been employed here since 1988. The, the job entails multiple things. 
for, for lack of better words, we you know, do the normal police procedures, patrol, you know, check doors, um, but we, we interact a lot with the students. The reward factor for me has been, I've, I've made some very, very good friends over the years who I've, you know, uh, kind of like watched them grow up through the through their college career, and kept in touch with them. My whole career has been enjoyable. If you did a highlight reel, you know, there, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly parts of it, but mostly good. The, the people make West Liberty a special place. When I first started here back in the early 80s, they, they just made you feel very welcome. Um, that's why I've stayed as long as I have, is, is because of the people. Mm -hmm.